Now we're ready to put it all together. We're going to put the uh, landmark octave shapes together with the triads, and we're going to go into chord construction. I'd like to just say a few words about the difference between chord construction and chord voicing, hopefully without being too pedantic. But terminology can sometimes be pretty important. Chord construction is the voicing of the chord in ascending order, in scale-wise order. And it, it never changes. It's the formula for building the chord. For example, a major chord, major triad, you know, is the first, third, fifth notes of, uh, of the scale. So a major chord, the construction of the chord would be one, three, five. That never changes. Chord voicing is once you get the notes, it has to do with the placement of notes on paper or on your instrument. So the major triad, which is constructed 1-3-5, can be voiced 1-3-5, or 3-5-1, or 1-5-3, or 5-1-3, or 5-3-1, or 1-5-3-1. I mean, there's so many different ways of doing it. So I just want to get those two terms clear because we're going to be talking about these chords. We're going to be building, we're going to be doing chord construction. You're going to learn chords with the root and the bass as the bass note voiced that way, the same chord is going to be voiced with the third in the bass, and the fifth in the bass, and the seventh or the sixth. You need that in order to be able to get these lines that we're talking about. So as we're getting into it, we want to, we want to really understand what's going on. So uh, we're going to be talking uh, today about building uh, major chords in, in root position, which means the root's going to be in the bass, and the bass is going to mean the sixth string for now, that bass doesn't always mean on the sixth string. It could be on just the lowest note of the chord. But we're going to be dealing with those kind of chords. Now, in rock and in folk music, <clears throat> the basic unit is the triad. I don't mean they don't use more sophisticated chords. But basically, your bar chord is nothing but, say, uh, majors one, three, five. So here we have one, five, one, three, five. So it's still a major chord. You've just doubled the notes. So uh, uh, you have major chords and minor chords. That's the basic unit. But when you get into uh, uh, other more sophisticated rock tunes, or country tunes, certainly jazz, classical music, we deal with units beyond the triad called seventh chords, and, and then there, we, we talk about extensions of those. And it all has to do with scales, because chords come from scales. Well, now we're going to talk about building major seventh chords, dominant seventh chords, major sixth and minor. We're going to do it with the use of the landmark octave shapes, which are going to get us those intervals that aren't the triad, OK? Now, if we look at the octave. That's eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's seven. There's flat seven. And there's six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice between six and seven, we have a whole step, two frets. Seven and eight is one. Below eight is seven, one fret. Flat at seven is one fret lower, and there's the six. Well, there's the octave shape. If you see the octave, you can visualize easily where the seventh is. Where is it going to be? One fret lower. So that is the interval of a major seventh. And of course, from what you've learned, you know you could play that major seventh interval all over the guitar. Look, there's a major seven. That's a major seven. Well, very dissonant. But believe me, when we bury it in a chord, it sounds beautiful. Like, it's like adding spice to food or color to a, a pencil sketch. Pretty similar, because this irritates. A little rub, a little pepper. All right, there's the major seven. Major seven, what do I have to do here? Right, major seven. And we keep that, major seven. Now, when we lower a major interval, it's said to be minor. Now, this is a minor seventh interval, not a minor seventh chord yet. But a minor seventh interval, it's the flatted seventh. You want to see minor seventh intervals all over the guitar? Just do that. What do you do when you get to your second string? There's your minor seventh intervals. Let's go. And when you lower a minor interval, it's said to be diminished. So this would be a diminished seventh interval. 
-hmm. It's also a major sixth enharmonically. I'll explain. Enharmonic means it, it is the same sound but with a different name. So let's not get confused. We'll call it a sixth now. It's also a diminished seven. So we're going to say this is the, the octave, the major seven, the minor seven, or the flatted seven, and the sixth. Want to play major six sounds, the interval? Interval meaning the distance between the lowest note and the, and the new note. Major six, what happens here? Got to raise that second string. So we have everything, no matter where you are. Here, you want a seventh? There it is. You want a major seventh from here? There it is. Easy. Now we put it together. Okay, let's take, let's take an A major chord. I'm going to move it over, and this is one, three, five. Let's try it. D, one, three, five. G, one, three, five, but I've raised the second string. Only this time, I'm not going to rearrange the finger. I'm going to leave it this way. I now have G. This time, instead of doing this, I'm still raising the second string, but I'm going to use the second finger here. So I still have a G triad. Let me do it again. There's G, B, D, which is root 3, 5. You know where root 3, 5 is. Now, this is going to be a chord with the root and the bass. The root means the name of the chord. The bass is going to be the sixth string. Here's a G chord. You actually know it when you play a bar. There it is. Only here, we're skipping the fifth string. And there's, there, uh, it's nice to skip the fifth string with some of these voicings, as you're going to see. It creates an interesting sound. That doesn't mean you always will skip the fifth string. But in this particular kind of voicing, we're going to be skipping the fifth string. So we have root, root three, five. But notice I do have an octave shape here. And when I know where the octave is, don't I know where the seventh and the flat seven and the sixth is? Well, here it is. Now, the spelling of a G major chord, of any major chord, is one, three, five. Spelling of a major seventh chord is one, three, five, seven, which means I need a seven. I could get a seven by taking that root and lowering it, but then I wouldn't have the root in the bass anymore. Before I show you this major seventh chord shape, which I think you can figure out for yourself, I'm going to give you that opportunity. You can now go figure it out for yourself. You know you need the seventh. And you still need the root and the third and the fifth. Hint, do you still need the eight? We want a seven. It's all yours. All right, what I'm now going to do is lower the 8 to 7. But that's very awkward on my fingers, so I'm going to make it as comfortable as possible. So I'm going to take these two fingers and do that. So now I have a major 7th chord. So this is a G major 7th. Listen to a plain G major chord. Major 7. That little bite is cool. Listen to that sound. So interesting, so much more interesting. Now, very often this is called a substitution, a direct substitution. Many, many books call it a direct substitution for a major chord. I don't like to think of it as a substitution at all. If you drink coffee black and you add cream and sugar, question, are you substituting anything? You're not. You're adding. And that's all you're doing. A G major chord and a G major 7th are the same chord. What you've done is embellish the chord. It's not a chord substitution, it's a chord embellishment, and it can be done at any time, any time at all. And, but there's something else that you have to know. You have to know the construction of the chord, which is 1, 3, 5, 7. That's the rule, that's the formula. But the voicing of this chord is one, seven, three, five. And you need to know it because in a little while you're going to be playing these voicings in other places. And you have to know where everything is. There's no getting away from it. And the further we go, you'll see why I said that. This is, so you need to know 
Major seventh, one, three, five, seven. What's this specific voicing? One, seven, three, five. Now, what's meant, and it's not a G seventh chord, it's a G major seventh chord, which is G M A J seven. Sometimes they use a, a uh, uh, triangle, G triangle seven, or sometimes they use a seven with a line through it, means major seven. It is an embellishment, a coloration of a G major chord. Simple as that, okay? Now, the G seventh chord is actually in a different key, and I'm not going to get into that right now, but the spelling of a, of a G seventh is called the G dominant seventh chord, is one, three, five, flat seven. In other words, we need a minor seventh interval. Okay, we've got root, seven, three, five. We need a flatted seven. Now, you can get this with a bar, but I don't want you to use a bar. I want you to be using all four fingers. I'm going to give you a chance first now to figure it out yourself. You've got the root, the third, and the fifth, and the seventh. You need to flat the seventh. It's all yours. Okay, now I'm going to do it. This takes a lot of, you know, oh, that doesn't work. You know, it, it, this is not easy to find the fingering, but here's what happens. In order to do it, you want to keep the root. You, ha you move this over here and this there, and there's your G7 chord. That may have been a little difficult to figure out. It's also not that easy to play. Okay, so that's the G7, G dominant 7, A7, B, they're all movable, of course. What is the construction of a G7 chord? One, three, five, flat seven. What's this specific voicing? One, flat seven, three, five. Now I'm going to go to a major sixth. The spelling is one, three, five, six. You're on a flatted seven already. Let's see what you could do. It's all yours again. All right, I need to bring this down to the sixth. What I do is I move this over and I move this over, keeping these two the same. There's your major six. So there's major seven. Now major seven to major six requires some control of the hand. I have a suggestion. In going from the major seven to the major sixth, if not going through the dominant seventh, you keep the pinky down, and you try to make this move. You're going to find this is the lazy finger. When I go like this, it's not so hard to do this. But this finger, trust me, and you'll see if you're not used to it, doesn't want to go there. So you'll go, <clears throat> it's difficult. I suggest sitting in front of television if you're watching, you know, The Sopranos or whoever. Uh, you, you just make this move. You don't have to play, you don't have to bother anybody. You can just make that move. And it sounds nice. All I'm doing is going G to A flat, G, A flat. Okay, now we're gonna go to that major sixth. I wanna make it a minor sixth. What do I have to do? It's interesting that the major sixth and the minor sixth chords both have a major sixth, so that doesn't change. But what happens is the third gets lowered. So a minor sixth chord is spelled one flat three, five, and uh, six. So if you can visualize the major triad, root three, five, there's where three is. Remember root three, five? Well, I have the root, the sixth, and the five. I have to lower the third. Try to figure out that on your own. It's on you again. Okay, now I lower the third and I get this. Now, 
Classical players generally will do this. Jazz players usually bar with the third finger, which requires it's, it's a little, because we can use other fingers going on here. So also, uh, there are other reasons for this. Uh, I prefer if you use the third finger barring, but that would be a minor sixth interval. Now the next one I really have to help you with because it's hard. The minor seventh is one flat three five and a flatted seven. Now you know this is the eight. This is the seven. The flat seven is here. What we do, we, in other words, we need this note, is generally we take this third finger and we bar the whole thing. And that's one of the reasons for the bar. Minor seven. Minor seven to six. So we got major seven to six. Minor seven to six. This is G major seven to G six. A minor seven, A minor six. Now also, another way to look at it, there's the major triad, there's minor. Then there's minor major seventh, which is a minor with a major seventh interval. This one I want to show you too. And then there's minor seven. Dozens of songs. So there's a lot of nice sounds there. Show you a few other things, chords that I hadn't even planned to, but I think I'll do right now, just to show you what you can what you can come up with, just understanding what's going on. Suppose I said play a major seven flat five chord, which is a, a pretty far out sounding voicing. Well, what do we have here? We have the root, the seven, the three, and the five. I have to flat it. Oh, see if you can figure that out. I want you to play a major seven flat five. It's going to sound very dissonant. In the right place, it can sound beautiful. If you know where the fifth is, there's one move you can make and you can flat it. It's up to you again. Take a try. And here we go. There's the major seven flat five. Let's try something else. Let's take a dominant seventh chord and flat the five. Try it yourself. Dominant seven flat five. A lot of different songs. Okay, that gives you the idea. So we've discussed major, major seven, dominant seven, major six, minor, minor major seven, minor seven, and minor six. What we're going to do next time is we're going to start talking about inversions. We're going to look at triads with inversions, and we're going to get these chords all over again, but this time in the first inversion. And then a lot of interesting things happen at that point. We'll have more bass notes and everything. So I'll see you next lesson.